Hey guys, this is Joe with Simple Solutions. I got a chance to hang out with several people from Fat Kids Kitchen at Earth Perks Farm here in North Carolina. They originated around 2006 and have been traveling around the U.S. feeding as many people as they can, for free. I found them all to be humorous, witty, knowledgeable, and just all around great people. Don't take my word for it though. Stick around and make your own decision. Oh, and by the way, if you ever see a great big old colorful school bus in your area with echoing sounds of music and laughter, it's probably them. And I encourage you to go say hi. Y'all live in a long narrow space, a long narrow space, a long narrow space. <laughs> This bus is one is probably the sixth or seventh bus that has belonged to Fat Kids Kitchen, which is a rainbow kitchen. Um, rainbow gatherings are a bunch of people that go live in the woods together, and every person you talk to will give you a slightly different answer about what exactly a rainbow gathering is. You know, for me, it's going and setting up a kitchen and feeding people because that's what I love to do. So about two years ago, on the bus, we went on this quest to find the hungry people in America and feed them. And what we learned is that if you're hungry in America, you're not paying attention. And there's, there's a lot of malnourished people. There's a lot of people who aren't eating real food. But, you know, even the drunkest home bum knows where to get a bologna sandwich at 3 o'clock. You know, we ran into this funny thing all the time where we'd be like making, you know, delicious crepes. And we'd find home with people and be like, do you want these crepes? And be like, do you have a bologna sandwich? <laughs> and... You know, and a, lot of, and a lot of people also think that free things must be bad, so they aren't willing to take our food. A lot of but people we, look at us and get scared and don't want right. to accept anything we're giving them. They're not realizing that we're just trying to actually give them good food. They think we're trying to play a trick on them. Right, right. Well, how do you feel about like people really judging you on ex your external presence? Yes, it's frustrating <laughs> when people just don't look past our image, but at the same time, we do keep our image for a reason, you know. And the people who do look past it are worth it, you know, mm -hmm. like. Right. Because a lot of times you wouldn't meet a lot of, you know, the people that we've met if you just looked normal, if you just looked like everyone else. Face on the street. Because yeah. people come up to you because, you know, like, I've just walking down the street many times, like, just me and one other person, or just me, and just like, you look like a very interesting person. You know, and just like engage in conversation and then like something just like happens, you know, and it's just, it's awesome. It's wonderful when things like that happen. And you know, if 
It's more encouraging. Yeah, but you know, there there are those people that just the the looks and you know some some things that some people say. It just you have to get it, just let it go because I mean it, it's always gonna be there. Like it's always going and to happen. At this point, it mostly just cracks me up. Yeah, you and see the the guy making the. Face and you're like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> and for every one person who we reach like that, we meet ten people who are amazing who don't care. Exactly. There's more good people in America than people give credit for. That is. Fucking it. So you guys actually stop places and feed people. How do you get the food for that? Is um, mostly donations. Um, I want to work towards relationships with good farms, and work trading a lot. That's my goal. Um, a lot of donations. A lot of. You know, we'll set up somewhere and start cooking with what we got, and people are like, oh, you're doing that? Well, I'll br I, I've got this, I'll bring over this, and it all comes together potluck style. Wow. Well, how do you guys fund yourselves? Magic and miracles. <laughs> Blessings. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I've been doing this for like three years, and people ask me that question all the time, and I don't really have a rational answer for that. It's just always, you know, we work when we can. We're pretty good at not really having money, and even when we have money, not really acting like we do and not spending money on stuff and just putting it into the essentials. And, you know, a lot of people see what we're doing and they think it's good, and, you know, we get $3 here, $20 here, and $100 here, and we're a really big group of people, too. So, like, you know, there's six or seven of us on the bus, but then someone will be off working right now, and then they'll be like, I'm done working, I'm bored, I'm gonna come back to live on the bus again, and then they'll have some money and they'll fund the next leg, and. Someone who's on the bus now will be like, I'm bored of the bus, I'm going to go work for a little while, and then I'll come back and fund the next light, leg of the bus. We are all brought up in a conditioned world, so something had to free your mind to let you experience something else. What was that? Huh. I mean, part of it is definitely that I'm blessed in that I specifically come from a place where my parents were hippies in the 60s and they they definitely their conditioning was I definitely received a slightly different set of conditioning than a lot of people had um, and I just had a series of people come into my life at exactly the right moments like no you can do exactly what you want to every day no you can you can really do whatever you want to every day like, well I'm really awful at living in a house and having a job and I'd really prefer to sleep outside and actually I would rather not work 40 hours a week to afford to live somewhere I don't want to and since I started doing this it, I don't know it, it feels right I had a 2 a.m. wake-up call every day to go to work and um, cause I'm a baker and that has been my occupation ever since I had an occupation how long ago was that uh, it was about six years Wow. five six years now um, but I have been out of the standard occupation for the past two years. But that does not mean that I don't keep baking because I most oh, certainly this lady do. Oh, baked so good. I <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but now I just do it in a completely different environment than you know the corporate job place where everything is set up the same and everything is done a certain way and everything is done like this. Like, I just like being able to put stuff in a bowl and mix it up and then it comes out wonderful. And, you know, I can feed all these people for free. And, you know, it's just, it's in a much different light. And I, I'd much rather do that. I have this one memory of hanging out with a bunch of them in Vermont and watching a sunset go down over Lake Champlain and our friend Aurora screaming, I love my life, and realized I didn't love mine. And realized I wanted to change it. And that's pretty much probably what that moment was. You know, mm -hmm. So you're living the example. You're not preaching and doing the opposite. You're living by the right, example. Right. I don't, I don't want to tell anybody what to do. No, I don't want to tell anybody examples. what their what their path is. Everyone's got a different path. Or I just want to be like, listen, you're in a cage, and I'm sorry, and I'm uh, I'm out here, and if you want to come, you're invited. <laughs> you know, I've I've have learned you can't you can't save your friends. You can't be like, no, come on, come on, no, come on, and you know, most of the time. <laughs> Did you lose friends that but, way? Have you lost a lot of friends that way? I know no, I have. I, mean, I have. 
Yeah, I definitely have friends that like I would I know would be so happy if they came here and I see them and they're so depressed and they're so hate their job and they hate their house and they hate their all the things but they have these reasons why they have to keep going to work so they can keep buying, paying for the house so they can do the things so they can do the other thing and I gotta go to work so I can make my car payment so I can get to work so I can afford to live in this house that with this pe these people that I hate and I don't know it's a vicious you cycle. Trust that your friends in their own time will figure out that they, it's what they need to be doing you can't tell it's them it's their time yeah but just trust that they're they will figure it out on their own. Yeah, no one told me that it was my time. I decided mm -hmm. that it was my time. They told me and I said, no, 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 no. And then I made up my own mind. <laughs> sure, you're, just, you're wasting you know energy. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, no, I understand. I was just curious of what you you were thinking. Because what? I, ha let me ask you this, though, because some people would say to that, well, if the dollar collapses tomorrow, that could have possibly affect your way of life, too, as well. Oh, yeah. Because if you're if you're stuck in Florida, and that and that something happens in 24 hours that state could be mass chaos and you could have martial law and one and you're stuck I'm but you got for it. you're ready for it i'm ready because for it. you guys could go That's live in the woods preparing for. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is training this is training, yeah, this is training, training for when it falls <laughs> yeah down. if it all that falls is, down you know? you know yeah if it all falls when? down i see a lot of people just going in mass chaos not knowing what to do and i'm gonna be still sitting there doing the same thing that i always do and not panicking <laughs> yeah not, panicking. not that, that's the biggest thing i think that our life is training for is not panicking because like frequently things happen that other people might perceive is a problem like we're out of money in diesel and these policemen want, them to, want us to leave their town that's happened but, before yes. oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but, but then once that's happened happens. a couple times you learn that every time that happens then something else happens after that and you keep going and like when all the crazy things that may or may not happen, happen. We're going to be sitting there drinking coffee. Yeah, we're going to be making a cup of coffee being like, well. So, this is what we do, guys. Cool. <laughs> I feel like we all have a basic knowledge and, you know, way of survival if something like that does happen. Go into the woods and, you know, do what we do. Because, like, No, I don't know what you do, so what, can you tell me what, <laughs> how do you survive in the woods? Are you foraging? Do you understand medicinal is that something that you guys have is that's knowledge? That's something we're learning. That's, yeah. that's okay. one of the things we're doing in the woods. I could safely say that all of us put together in a group know enough edibles, how to prepare them, what to do with them, that we could all just live happily and keep Yeah, <laughs> with, with all the knowledge collectively, yes. alone, I'd probably die. Yes, alone, but yes. But with my family, with the, my group of friends that know what they're doing, as individuals on their yeah. own level, we would, we'd, we win. <laughs> <laughs> we, right. we we're wouldn't also, have a problem. We're I know also how to hunt really well. Like, you know, like that's what I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Thank well you. trained yeah. on dealing with other humans in a non, in a way that doesn't involve hierarchy, which is a thing that's suddenly going to blow a bunch of people's minds when and if that happens. Is that suddenly there isn't a, you know, pecking order of things the way that it used to be, and you just have to like to talk to people. Out. Whoa. And that's the thing that we do all the time. So it's a, it's an up, you just sang the ups and this is a this is a down song you're saying. But if these are our down, if that song is our downs though, then I think we're doing really good. good. You know? yeah, yeah. That is kind of how we all get when we're all put, when yeah. we're all like having those days. We're like, I'm fucking grumpy today. Uh, what about? I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Shut up! I'm about. <laughs> All <right>. Well put. <laughs> you, you know me, Mr. Articulate. Mm. <laughs> and, uh... Joke and I just wanna scream without. 
influence of these people who brought the, this mass consciousness and awareness of the uh, of this other way of living besides the rigid structure of society that we could live without that and be ourselves and and this uh, and I love it quiet and meditative oh, all hail Discordia! Whereas the pranksters are very, they come in loud, throwing off smoke bombs and lighting off fireworks, bringing all sorts of hoopla out, just to say, we're here, we're here, and you're here, let's be here together, kind of thing. <laughs>